we gotta... In 2021, the song Chug Jug With You, a Fortnite parody song of Estelle's American Boy made by YouTube user Leviathan, got really inexplicably popular on TikTok. And the trend around it was, wait, this song is good, actually. It's worth noting that the peak of Fortnite's popularity and the original release of this song were a few years earlier in 2018. As a response to this phenomenon, I made this TikTok. People who are enjoying this song are doing so with two layers of irony. One layer of irony would be what we think of as cringe culture. Enjoying it ironically because you think that it's not good and you want to make fun of it. That's not what's happening here for the most part. There's another layer added onto this where I should think this is cringy, but I don't. This legitimately slaps and this kid did a good song with this cover. And that's why I'm saying there's like two layers of irony here. In doing so, we're sort of making fun of cringe culture. And because this song is so popular right now, and because everybody is enjoying it with these two layers of irony, I think we've reached the popular consensus that cringe culture isn't cool anymore. And also not to brag or anything, but that TikTok did get featured in a Vice article about the trend. So, uh, that's pretty cool. I got a few comments taking issue with my statement of cringe culture isn't cool anymore. People said things like, no, people still make fun of other people for embarrassing hobbies, the internet will always be mean, show feet. But that's not exactly what I was talking about. I was talking about cringe culture itself as the dominant internet culture on TikTok. People usually define cringe culture as making fun of people for earnestly liking a thing. But in my experience, its definition is a little more narrow. And just a little disclaimer, all of the definitions that I'm talking about are just my definitions of things. I define cringe culture as a specific period of secondhand reverse nostalgia and a consensus, especially on TikTok, that bullying was okay, actually. Let's tackle that anti-nostalgia bit first. If nostalgia is reminding you of something from your past, but fondly, we are talking about being reminded of your past and wanting to implode. It's about knowing better. When you remember something embarrassing you did when you were 12, it's cringe because you know better now than to start a fan club for the new cute transfer student that everybody in class had a crush on. Anyway, when I think about that, I feel cringe for obvious reasons. Secondhand cringe is when you experience someone participating in something that you would not, because you know better. If you were embarrassed by that little anecdote from earlier because you know better than to do that, that is secondhand cringe. This is why a wide variety of things can be labeled cringe. Because someone should know better than to draw Undertale fan art in 2022, and someone should know better than to yell at a retail worker and play the victim card, both can cause onlookers to feel secondhand cringe. Onlookers believe the subject should know better than to do what they are doing. In 2021, Fortnite fandom, especially on a large enough level to make a parody song about it, should have caused a lot of people to feel secondhand cringe. Sure, you might have played Fortnite for a bit, yeah, but that was before you realized it wasn't actually that fun. It was actually super corporate and a game for babies. If someone is super into it in 2021, they don't know better than to not be into it anymore. You feel secondhand cringe. So that's cringe, but not all of the above examples qualify as cringe culture. Both cringe and secondhand cringe are incredibly subjective emotions. Cringe culture is just that, a culture, a set of customs and beliefs. Those customs, for lack of a better word, it was cyberbullying. Okay, so individual users definitely got cyberbullied. That definitely happened. But there was also just a culture of suppression. Hello, all you lovely people. This is Editing Savannah. I would like to take this moment to direct your attention to the blue and brown circle in front of me. What you are looking at is a Thanksgiving themed sock placed around the top of a Tupperware lid that has had the center cut out. That's right. It's a jerry-rigged pop filter. Now, it did a pretty good job of eliminating plosives through most of this video, but right about here is where it starts to not. And I say a sentence with so many plosives right here, and I just wanted to apologize in advance. So yeah, h here we go. So this attitude of people who participate enthusiastically are cringe and you should not be cringe. I'm going to take you all the way back to the fall of 2018. Musical.ly had just emerged from its pupa into a beautiful new TikTok. Musical.ly had been the butt of jokes for a few years and its user base mostly consisted of lip syncers and cosplayers, many of whom were fairly young. Though cringe happened on an individual subjective level, these lip syncers and especially cosplayers were cringe for a lot of people. Dressing 
dressing up as your favorite characters is totally normal. For a child, for a teenager, that's weird. It doesn't matter that they're not hurting anybody. They should know better than to dress in fun costumes unless it's literally Halloween. And they're pretending to say things as that character in a public space. They should know better than to play pretend. A wave of new TikTok users joined mostly to make fun of the previous user base. This is where we got ironic TikTokers, AKA I'm not taking this platform seriously, I'm doing this to make fun of the platform, and cringe compilations. And ironic TikTokers did not necessarily make fun of individual users, although many of them did, but many of them made fun of trends or patterns that appeared on the app, which yes, people do still do that on every platform, but this ironic participation was incredibly pervasive. Like any genuine participation on TikTok was at risk of being considered cringe. This is cringe culture. It was the period in 2018 where the collective consensus was that because this person should know better than to do this thing, we all have the okay to make fun of them. It's a specific phenomenon and the reason why Hit or Miss got so popular. However, as we all know, if you do something ironically long enough, eventually it's not ironic anymore. I can think of a specific turning point for this. In January 2019, TikTok user Tonel Terry, who by the way has since changed his username to Graham McLarnon, released this video making fun of a cosplay trend. Okay, so like why do cosplayers do like the like like they're an animation? I don't it looks weird. It's at one point in time, Tonal Terry would have been considered an ironic TikToker, one of the kind who just like made fun of TikTok as a platform. It feels important to note that Graham has since deleted the video saying that all of the followers who came from it didn't seem to enjoy his actual content. So like, don't go follow him because of the video that I just showed you. Follow him if you think he's cool. I think he's cool. So basically what I showed you wasn't the original video. It was a crop in from a duet from a cosplayer. The cosplay community on the app collectively played an Uno reverse card. Cosplayers took that audio, made tons of videos doing exactly what was described and basically used it to be like, yeah, that's the point. This rules actually. I very briefly spoke to Graham on Twitter and he was very, very nice. And he confirmed that like he was, you know, in on the joke. Cosplayers are funny. But anyway, I think this video and the response to it mark a shift from the dominant culture on TikTok being cringe culture and people being on the platform ironically to make fun of it to people just like using the app because they enjoy it. Bullying will always exist. People will always make fun of other people for earnestly enjoying things. And people will always feel a pang of secondhand cringe when they see someone who, in their eyes should know better. But TikTok as we know it today was built on the specific widespread phenomenon of cringe culture. As the ironic TikTokers became just TikTokers, they built the foundation for much of the comedy on the app. Side note, everyone on TikTok owes everything to the cosplayers. They are the backbone. Say thank you to a cosplayer today. When I say Chug Jug's double ironic popularity means that cringe culture isn't cool anymore, I mean that the initial era of collective bullying that was so formative to TikTok's early popularity isn't much of a thing anymore. This of course means that because we should all know better than to participate in cringe culture, cringe culture itself, is now cringe. Hi, I got a haircut and I'm in a hotel now. Don't worry about it. Thank you to TikTok users Graham McLarnon, Conflicts.tv, and Honeybee Glory Cause for letting me use your videos. If you want more of whatever this is, you can find me on TikTok at your local library. Also, I'm one of the hosts on SciShow Space now, so if you really can't get enough of my face and voice, you can see me there too. Thank you, goodbye!